Hey guys, Anel here. I was asked earlier today to make a video about the specific Mith Mithra setup I run. I figure that by itself isn't all that interesting and oftentimes it can change, so I was just going to make a general video about Mithra and how to use her. Hopefully this video can help people struggling with the game as well as people who have already beaten the game who are looking to tackle post-game challenges. So Mithra is an extremely good blade. I think she is probably the best blade in the game, or at least tied for the best. There's one other blade who is ridiculously powerful when grinded out, and is probably better at that point, definitely. But she comes very late, and the grind to get that blade to max potential is so time-consuming that by the time you reach that max potential, you've likely already done everything the game has to offer. Because of this, I still think Mithra is going to be the best blade for people to use in the game. So... On Mithra's summary page, we can see her stats here. I have 15... 173 auto attack, 2% uh, block rate, which is kind of bad, but that doesn't really matter much, and a 54% critical hit rate. These stats are obtained with the Moon Matter Core Chip dropped from Cloud Sea King Ken, a super boss in the Tantel region. This and um, all of this is with S plus grinded trust Mithra. You can raise trust by feeding food to your blades after they have reached a full affinity chart and have all of the nodes. You just can grind their trust and affinity the same way you have the entire game by feeding them, doing quests, battling with them, but feeding is usually going to be the fastest way no matter what. So her blade hearts in battle are critical up and recharge boost. Recharge boost isn't really that useful because of something else that I'll go into later, but it can still have its uses. Critical up just increases her critical hit rate, which is just good for more general damage, and it scales really well with her, trust me. So that 54% crit rate and high auto attack rate are what really make her a really good character, but here's the um, main things I wanted to discuss. We can discuss the affinity tree now, which is extremely broken, like, these are her abilities, her blade specials, when... There's not much to really say about them. Like, they're just good in general. If you're less than 30% health, this attack does a lot of damage. If you, this attack will always go through guards. And this attack does increase damage to top hold enemies. Your level 3 special is the one you want to be using most often. Level 2 and level 3. Level 1 special only hits once, so it isn't very useful for her. Because of reasons I'll explain in a second. So, her first um, battle skill here is Foresight which increases the accuracy and evasion rate of the entire team by 50% of max affinity. This is so incredibly useful, especially if you're already running like an evasion tank like Morag with like Katana users and Brigid. This is just something really useful to have, and it makes some fights later in the game like Orion spe specifically easier just because you'll be able to hit him and his high evasion rate. So that's a really useful skill to have. Um, this one just raises critical hit rate by 15%. That one's not too special, but it's still really good to have. Now, here is the broken one. So, at level 1, this one's not really that great, but it's still pretty good. You recharge an art or special by 20% upon landing a critical hit. But as you go up in rank, it scales tremendously well, adding 20% each time, all the way to a maximum of 100%. So, what this essentially means is that if you use an art, and get a critical hit, you will instantly refund that art. That's absolutely insane. And this also works for her blade special too. So you can get like just insane amount of mileage out of her blade specials and arts, which are really useful for charging up orbs incredibly fast, especially since you're gonna have at least level one special basically all the time since these two moves are multi-hit moves. So those are the ones you want to actually use because all of them can proc this effect which means it's almost impossible not to always have your blade special up unless you just use this, which is only really useful at the very early stage of the fight. But this ability in particular is extremely broken in my opinion, and it's what really allows Mithra to stand out as probably the best blade in the entire game. And I'll go into more detail on that later. So the aux cores I like to run on her are, in general situations, critical up 5 and affinity max attack 5. Affinity Max Attack is the the, the highest um, additive multiplier you can have for an aux core, as far as I'm aware anyway. 
And Critical Up 5 just helps raise your critical hit rate to even higher levels, which is stuff we really want. Other things that are pretty good to run for her are outdoor attack up stuff because you want to be fighting outdoors with her since her level 4 special. The Sacred Arrow only works outdoors. Um, top 4 resist is really good for certain fights. You don't really need night vision. Reflect immunity is good against certain fights. And if you want any overkill stuff you can run Art Seal because that's not really that great in my opinion. But. These are the main two things you probably want to run. I can't really think of anything that's really better unless there's a specific fight that you need, like, a resistance to, like, a status effect or something. So, that's that's how Mithra's set up for me. Now I was going to discuss um, how I set up Rex's stuff. So, for Rex's accessories, what I generally run for most battles are going to be Avant Guard Metal and the, and the High Tech Eye Patch. This is what really allows the Mithra build to be really strong. I think Avant Guard Metal is the best accessory in the entire game. You restore damage, um, well, you restore health based on your critical damage that you deal. So, basically every time you use an art with Mithra, you're going to be healing your health all the way back to full health. Like, even if you have aggro, you're basically just functioning as a regeneration tank. Instead of like an evasion tank or a health tank, you're just basically a regeneration tank. And this is really, really good. Like, you can run this basically on anyone. You can run this on your actual, like, evasion or health tanks that have the aggro, and they pretty much can't die either. So, this is what really allows the Mithra build to work. You don't have to worry about really taking aggro, because you can just keep healing yourself, usually. Um, status effects are the only main thing to worry about at that point, or if they have the seal health, health recovery, which I haven't seen too often in the late game at all. High Tech Eye Patch is, um, this is not the level 3 version, there's actually a stronger version than this, which I'm too lazy to get, but it adds 52% to the damage ratio after canceling an auto attack. Damage ratio is actually applied at a different part of the damage for formula, as far as I can tell from tests I've done, than additive damage multipliers, so it makes this usually better than, like, any of the 60% additive multipliers by far because you'll just get so much extra damage by increasing the damage ratios of your arts and blade specials. So it's really good to have. The only thing that can be higher than this that's an additive multiplier is the World Tree Drop. And that, not that version. This version. Which can reach a maximum of 250% and increase your damage pretty tremendously. But that's if you want a really slow fight. It's not really that worth it, in my opinion, because... You can end fights just much quicker by having just this flat damage high tech eye patch. But if you really want to see some crazy damage numbers, you can run World Tree Drop. Other good items to run are the Omega Drive, which I don't know if I have one. Here, here's one. It's so this will fill fill the party gauge each time you land a critical hit, which is really useful to have because you can have your party gauge like up basically at all times, just after using a few blade specials and Mithra and stuff like that. Revival Pod's also a pretty good thing to have if you're worried about dying. It's not really needed in party runs, but it can be useful. Otherwise, there's not really, like, too much else to, like, talk about, though. These are probably what you're going to want to run. Male Loincloth's pretty good, I guess, if you're looking for an additive multiplier that's not World Tree Drop. But you definitely want to run this. This is, like, a necessity. This is the best accessory in the entire game. You need to run this. So, next I want to look at um, Rex's skill tree, because it synergizes pretty well with Mithra also. You've got this ability, which adds 20% to the damage auto attack ratio after canceling an attack, which increases her damage further, which is really good. You've got this. This is really good, too. It lets you cancel driver arts into another driver art. You haven't s seen, like, it, it's almost comical to like cancel double spinning edge or rolling smash into itself over and over and over just because you keep getting critical hits. Like, it's actually ridiculous and so funny to me. And this one also synergizes really well, Drive to Win. This fills your party gauge each time you get a critical hit, and as we know, Mithra has a ton of critical hit rate, so you'll be proccing this all the time. And if you have like Omega Drive combined with this, your, your, your party meter just goes up hilariously much every time you get you use like a blade special or something like you don't have to worry if your characters die because like you'll always have party meter up to revive them 
As far as anything else, this is pretty good for um, other reasons because chain attacks are pretty powerful. And all the abilities that let you have all your arcs up at the start of the battle are pretty good. But I'm sure you guys already have Rex maxed out, so there's not really a ton to like talk about here. So I wanted to show you guys um, general fight strategy and how to really abuse Mithra's potential in fights and show what she can do in a team environment and how all of her abilities can synergize well together. So in general, how you want to approach fights with Mithra is just stack your orbs as fast as possible and she can easily put on like two or three orbs by herself. There's three easy paths she has, light into light into light, light into light into water, and light into electric into fire by switching to Pyra for one last combo there. So, we're gonna have aggro here, but we're gonna probably pretty easily heal up. We use our level one special pretty fast in this fight by using our three arts. And now we're gonna spam Sword Bash and use the Gamma Ray almost instantly as well. And we can do the same thing in charge of Supernova. One more art, we'll cover it, and now we have Supernova. So we're able to stack on one orb in probably about 30 seconds, which is insanely valuable. Because oftentimes you can be waiting to use arts and your allies to get your specials up as fast as possible. And we were able to do that with just Mithra. And we can just repeat that for um, another orb. We can do that for the water orb too. So I get hit there, but... I'm gonna heal myself up with crit. I lost some health there, but now you see I'm back full again. So I can use Gamma Ray again right here. And either Morag or Nia should already have water. I'm gonna use Mor Morags though, because Nia has electric. You don't have to for this fight, this one's almost over. But you can just see how fast you can just charge orbs. And in addition, you can get full burst with four orbs. And for the fourth orb, you can take advantage of another form of Mithra, which can also use any form to charge things. So in this fight, we can just finish this off with like a chain attack. That's what you really want to do. You want to try to get a, on health sponges, you want to try to get a full burst. So you want at least four orbs. But you can easily charge all eight with like the right party setup. So... At this point, I'm just overkilling him, just to show you guys. Well, that about covers the guide mostly. Mithra has some pretty crazy potential to do some fun things in fights. And this ability to stack orbs really fast is extremely valuable in all stages of the game. Some fights um, can be on a timer before they get really powerful abilities that you want to like not have to deal with. So being able to kill really early is extremely valuable. And with Mithra, you can just stack orbs super fast and get really powerful chain attacks, which is kind of the main way you, you can approach every fight in this game. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed my guide about how to use Mithra and how to set her up, and enjoyed the general fight strategy I just showed, and that about covers it. Thank you for watching, and have a blessed day.